All right, so we're three years into our XR initiative. It's been amazing. You know, I started in fall of 2019. This little thing happened in March of 2020 that put us all on a different path. So it was an interesting time uh, to hire a team of developers and everybody remote. Uh, but we've been able to accomplish a lot, which is exciting. Uh, last year at this summit, we announced a partnership with Coursera to create uh, 10 XR enhanced online courses. So when we started the program, we focused mostly on campus because we thought we could get headsets to students and create experiences and run labs and things like that. And we pushed off the work on the online space because we knew most people don't have a headset and creating these experiences was more challenging. We needed to learn a bit. Um, so uh, the focus was on the future of work. We thought about XR in multiple ways uh, and really thinking about accessibility and access for remote learners. We know many of these folks are from places that don't have great internet. They're probably accessing on a mobile phone. So we had to really think about that in terms of accessibility. So we started out with creating experiences with interactive 360 degree video, uh, mobile augmented reality, virtual production, and then the last is immersive VR. So headset VR, we're kind of pushing that to the end, thinking fewer people have that. Um, really around critical skills, role playing, healthcare skills, so we were thinking of the types of courses we wanted to create. And so we sourced all of these courses from faculty here at Michigan. So we found faculty who wanted to do this, and then we worked with our team at the Center for Academic Innovation to develop the learning experience design, the media design. So a lot of the folks in the audience and people you see here uh, playing a big role in all of that. Uh, we have launched the first three courses on Coursera. They launched earlier this year. Uh, our first course was People, Technology, and the Future of Mobility. So we have a whole autonomous city here at U of M called M-City. And so we would add some interactive 360 video in an autonomous vehicle, around the car, the batteries. So in the cores, you can explore uh, this 360 so you can kind of jump off from Coursera and access this interactive 360 experience. Uh, the next one was with our faculty in public health, Advancing Health Equity, a Guide to Reducing Bias in Healthcare. And so we created a simulation about a transgender patient and an experience with a healthcare provider and what that's like to go through. It's not a simple situation. It can be uncomfortable. So you have a chance to practice these situations in a safer space. And then uh, Professor uh, Patrick Berry from the law school, we created an uh, experience called Feedback Loops. So you get to practice giving and receiving feedback, presenting to a large class in VR. So with the interactive 360 video, you can access it in a browser, on a mobile phone, and we use a platform called uptail.io, and they also have an Oculus Quest or MetaQuest uh, application, so you can access it on a headset. And so our first uh, set of courses, we're just trying to see how are, are they accessing them, how does it impact the learning, and are they access, what method are they accessing with, browser, phone, or headset. So a little too early to tell right now, uh, the data, uh, what that's looked like, but we'll be analyzing that over the rest of this year. Uh, we have a next set of courses uh, in the works, uh, High Stakes Leadership with Professor Barger, who's back here. Hi, Mike. Good to see you. Uh, we're really excited about this. This is an experience uh, where you get to practice uh, in, a health, in a high crisis situation, um, communicating with angry passengers at an airport terminal as if you're the manager. So we did some real cool work with metahumans and motion capture, and you get to practice having this interaction with all these angry customers that you stranded uh, and what that's like. Uh, working on a similar situation with successful negotiation with another faculty at the Ross School of Business, uh, working with Deb Lee and Melissa Bathish, creating the Nurses Toolkit. So this is a, a course to create global nursing skills, and we'll be using augmented real mobile augmented reality as part of that, so you can see how some of the procedures and some of the um, techniques or skills that you're learning, you can actually pull up your phone and access and see like that. Uh, and then uh, <coughs> Rebecca, uh, Dr. Rebecca Quintana and Dr. Chris Quintana are creating a course called uh, An Introduction to Learning Experience Design. Well, they'll be exploring a lot of these different uh, interactive 360 video, mobile AR, virtual production, and these tools in the learning design experience. Uh, we have an XR curriculum here at Michigan. Uh, we have an XR graduate certificate that was launched in the fall of 2020. So students in a master's program can enroll in their certificate. Uh, they take 12 credits. They do a capstone project. They do an internship, often with the XR initiative, with our team. 
uh, and then uh, they can earn a certificate as part of their master's program. Uh, also, our team has worked with uh, Dr. Niebling to create an XR for Everybody course on Coursera today. So that's accessible. I think, what are we up to? Over 10,000 people have enrolled? 25,000? So it's going. So it's the three courses about the knowing, doing, and shaping the future of XR. And if you, anyone's interested in like, how does all this technology work? What are the devices? What are the affordances? That first course is really key. And Michael does some really cool stuff uh, in the way we created the production. Uh, so he's got some videos where he's in VR teaching about VR, which is pretty cool. So over the last uh, three years, uh, so one of the ways that we work with faculty is they pitch us uh, proposals on how they would use XR in the classroom. It's a good thing. That one's not too annoying. Uh, <laughs> oh, that guy, Alan was the one that did that. Uh, so this is, so the faculty pitch us on ideas and then we review those and fund them. So we've received 40 proposals from the last three and a half years. We've funded 29 of those uh, from 17 of our 19 schools and colleges. A pretty broad distribution across the institution. As you can see a lot in architecture, engineering, uh, literature, science, and the arts, nursing, med school, dentistry. So a lot of areas that are already thinking in simulation or 3D uh, leaned in a little heavier. Uh, but some really cool work with kinesiology and social work and uh, the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. Uh, some of those projects, uh, our team, so in many cases, uh, we will provide in-kind support so our team of developers and designers will work with the faculty and their students or subject matter experts to create these experiences. Uh, so one of them was with Professor John Rule in the back there in the College of, Arch School of, Archite College of Architecture, I think that's a typo, uh, called Augmented Tectonics. So this is an experience where uh, Professor Rule teaches about construction design principles with building with glass, steel, concrete, and wood. And so then there's a lecture about that and then they can go into the VR lab and experience uh, these design challenges in the wood module. And so it's a whole space, which is really cool. We love this project. We, our team worked with Professor Rule and a couple of grad students, and so they built all the architectural models, all the textures, and it's a really amazing uh, experience. If you're here tomorrow, you can come check that out in our booth. You can come try that uh, at our XR Initiative booth. Uh, we worked with Professor Kachunas in the College of Engineering and built the four, the recreated the Ford nuclear reactor. We had an active nuclear reactor on campus for over 50 years. It is no longer active. It's been decommissioned. It was decommissioned back in 2003. Uh, we're not bringing it back. We're most likely not gonna build a new one, but we can build one in virtual reality. And so we, we didn't really know it at the time, but we built a digital twin uh, of this space. And two freshman students did all the 3D modeling which is crazy, and then worked with our team to build the learning design and interactions, and now students can go into the reactor, run simulations, go into the reactor core and do things that they couldn't do in real life, because you would die. Uh, we worked with uh, Dr. Abersold and created a VR experience called Under the Skin uh, about how to treat someone, how to use, deliver chemotherapy treatment, and what can happen under the skin if it's not delivered correctly. This is a pretty cool experience. This is available on the Oculus Quest uh, on the App Lab, uh, available to the world today. We, this has all been made possible by our XR student fellows. We hire a lot of student fellows. We won an Epic Games mega grant three years ago to hire students to teach them how to build XR, primarily with Unreal Engine, uh, but in general. So we have students from all across campus. They help us with uh, prototyping, designs, uh, Instagram filters, that's augmented reality. They just don't call it that. Uh, and then you see down here, uh, Jackson, one of our student fellows, he's created a metahuman of himself. He did a pretty good job there. A lot better than mine. Mine doesn't look anything like me. Uh, maybe it's the hair or lack of. Um, <laughs> one of the things we're able to do through this whole process is start to build out an inventory of devices to make available to students and faculty. So we have over 100 uh, Oculus or MetaQuest devices that are available for students, faculty, and staff. We have four HoloLens 2 devices, and we follow COVID safety protocols. We have a clean box. We have a whole protocol to clean them when they come back in and disinfect. Uh, and then many courses now are using those. Uh, and you can see one of our uh, School of Environment and Sustainability courses just last week or a couple weeks ago, uh, we're testing out some experiences uh, in class. We are excited today to announce we are launching. We have partnered with Columbia and Stanford for the Thousand Cut Journey Project, if any of you have heard of this. 
This was an application that Dr. Courtney Cogburn and Jeremy Balenson created in 2017. And we, our team worked with them to convert it from PC VR into Unreal Engine to now be available on the Oculus Store. And so we are in the final stages of getting that approved and published. It, it runs, it works, it's been used in a private preview. So uh, that should be coming out uh, in the next few weeks, which is a very exciting collaboration between our institutions and the amazing work that they all did to create this. All right, I am excited today to announce that we are embarking on the next generation of video production. We have worked with White Light, with there's some folks here uh, in, in the audience, to create an XR studio, an XR stage we are building at the, our new offices over on Maynard Street, uh, which will be starting to install this July, a full LED volume in virtual production studio that we'll be using as part of our media design and production at Academic Innovation. And so this is a, an animation we built of that, of what the studio looked like. So there's LED panels up there and there's an LED floor. We'll have different cameras. We'll have a whole tracking system and we'll be able to create uh, high quality video content uh, and interactions. So you can interact with AR objects in a video uh, production perspective. So we're excited, really excited about that. And that should be available this, yes. <laughs> And the very cool animation that Ray Majewski created, that will be, uh, will be open probably in September uh, for folks to come check that out. Which is really cool. I want to give out a special thanks to one of our student fellows, Amelia Berry. This whole summit, this whole conference wouldn't have happened without her and her ability to jump in and help program manage and project manage and support everything that you see today and tomorrow and working with all of our speakers and facilitating everything. So thank you, Amelia. Really appreciate it. And congratulations. <laughs> She's graduating in a couple of weeks, so we're sorry to see her go, but we really appreciate everything you've done for us over the last three years. It's been amazing. Uh, and I want to thank our team, uh, Moiso Salim, Eric Schreffler, Jesse Kittle, and Ray Majewski. They've helped tremendously with the summit and the support, as well as all of the stuff you'll see tomorrow in our exhibit hall and our booth. And our XR faculty innovators and residents, uh, Michael Niebling, Michelle Abersold, and Jonathan Rule, thank you all for your support and guidance and strategic input for the initiative. Uh, our student fellows, uh, Amelia again, Sheng Zheng Li, Jackson Roth, Jessica Browning, Jim Benji, Jordan Pinnett, Luthien Liu, Nandini Komeneni, Ryan Foster, Ryan Kep, and Shannon Lee. We have the, these are our active student fellows this semester that have been working with us to help support the initiative and the summit. So thank you all very much. Uh, and our sponsors, Microsoft, Accenture, Oxford Medical, SIM, and Ann Arbor Spark. Really appreciate all the support uh, that has gone into this. So thank you so much. <laughs>